thank you all so much for joining our webinar today for the startup Caldwell Watauga Roundtable. Um, we are excited to have a virtual entrepreneurship roundtable today. My name is Stephanie Kissel. I am the co-founder of Supportedly. We are partnered with Dr. Porch and Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute to bring Startup Caldwell Watauga to fruition. Startup Caldwell Watauga strives to bring entrepreneurial resources and our community together digitally, helping everyday entrepreneurs and small business owners find answers to their questions, connect with amazing resources like Carmela at the Small Business Center, and learn through online how-to trainings that focus on the information you need to help start and grow your business, always with the entrepreneur's needs and perspective in mind. Before we begin, I would like to personally thank Dr. Mark Porch and Carmela Tomlinson, president of CCCNTI and director of the Small Business Center, respectively. Their dedication and passion for this community has been apparent at every turn as we work together to build the startup Caldwell Watauga program. So enough from me. Um, I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Mark Porch to say a few words about the program and the role of CCCNTI in supporting small businesses in this region. Thank you, Stephanie, and good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be with you. Uh, my name is Mark Porch, and I'm proud to be the president of Caldwell uh, Community College and Technical Institute. We serve Caldwell and Watauga counties, hence the name Startup Caldwell Watauga. Uh, and we're uh, really excited to uh, unveil our new platform uh, to you today that's going to support small businesses in our community. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Stephanie and, and Tom and the entire uh, team at Supportedly for their work uh, with this. Also, uh, certainly want to thank Carmela and her leadership as our small business center director. You know, I tell everybody all the all the time it's about the people you hire, and I couldn't have hired anybody any better than Carmela to lead our small business center. Uh, she's a small business owner herself, so she understands uh, the trials and tribulations that small business owners go through. And so she uh, and she also understands what resources need to be available to our small business community to help them uh, be successful. So Carmela, thank you uh, for everything that you have done. And to our small business owners who have joined us today, thank you so much for your leadership role in this process. Thank you for uh, being part of our video uh, process that we'll uh, hopefully show folks today. Uh, but most of all, I want to thank our small business owners for everything that they do in our in our local communities and the role that you play. Uh, we all know how important small businesses are, but I will. So I probably don't have to tell this group this. But as we think about economic and workforce development in, our, in the future of our communities, small businesses are where it's at. And, uh, you know, that's that's the entities that we're going to rely on for job creation and economic growth in our uh, community. So thank you again to those who have uh, led the way thus far. Uh, we, we certainly think this product and this platform in startup startupcallwellwatauga.com will be a tremendous resource as, as new businesses uh, think about opening and as new business owners um, kind of get into this arena. Uh, you'll learn a lot about the website today, uh, but you know I think when I think about the community college's role in supporting uh, our small business community, one of the pillars of our mission is to support economic development through comprehensive resources uh, to businesses, and that's exactly what I see this uh, as. Uh, you know, this platform uh, that we've developed in in cooperation with. Supportedly is a comprehensive resource to our small business community. Everything that you uh, are going to need to help operate your small business, I think you can find information and resources and webinars and training and those types of things right there in one location that are going to help our small businesses uh, launch and be successful. So we're uh, very excited about uh, this uh, product and this project that we've worked on together. And we're also very excited uh, to partner with so many different people uh, to make this happen. You know, I always tell everybody when um, we're talking about the community college and our role in our communities, is there's one thing that's very apparent, and that is that partnerships matter. Uh, partnerships are what make the difference in our communities being able to be successful. And this is just another example of how we're partnering 
with various agencies and various businesses in our community uh, to lift Caldwell County and Watauga County up. Um, you know, I said this in the video, so you'll probably see it. We may be rural and we may be small in Caldwell and Watauga, but we are a dynamite community that promotes entrepreneurship and we support each other. You know, the people in our communities are very, very special. Our people make the difference. And uh, again, thank you so much to all of the people uh, who are here with us today, all of the folks who may see this in the future. And if there's ever anything that we can do at CCCNTI to help move your business forward, that's what we're here to do. Uh, you know, our role is to help you be successful and to help connect you with resources. And that's exactly what we intend to do. So. Miss Stephanie, thank you so much. Thanks to Tom and the entire team at Supportedly. And I'll turn it back over to you. And uh, we look forward to sharing some information with everybody today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Porridge. So to help with introductions and to get us going today, I'd like to introduce Caitlin Smith, who helps us keep the Startup Caldwell Watauga program running. Caitlin, take it away. Thanks, Steph. Hey, everybody. I'm Caitlin. Uh, I've been with Supportedly for about a year now, and one of my favorite things about building these startup programs is getting to hear from real entrepreneurs in the region who have found support either through the Small Business Center or have mentored other entrepreneurs themselves. Um, today, we've brought together a few Caldwell County and Watauga County entrepreneurs, um, along with some individuals who work so hard to support local businesses in the region to talk about their personal experiences, their challenges, and their victories. Uh, to the listening audience, we like for these discussions to be super informal. Um, we like to take this opportunity as one to connect on a real level as members of this startup community. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the QA function at the bottom of your screen, and we'll make sure that they get answered during the roundtable. Um, without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our entrepreneur panelists. We have Jennifer Endicott, owner of Furcott Fermentables, Ben Coffey, owner of BC Cinematics, Denise and Fulton Lovin, owner of the Houghton, owners of the Horton Hotel, Ryan Settlemeyer, owner of Escape Attractions, and Carmela Tomlinson, the SBC director at CCC NTI, as well as the founder and owner of Paragon Designs. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining our discussion today, and we can go ahead and get started. Back over to Steph. Thank you. All right. Um, so kicking us off, Jennifer, would you mind kicking us off and telling us a bit about your business and what led you to entrepreneurship and small business ownership? Yeah, um, I own Furcott Fermentables, which is in downtown Lenore. Uh, we are a craft beer and fine wine shop along with other fermented beverages. Um, we opened three and a half years ago. I'm originally from Lenore, so after moving away uh, after high school, I um, wanted to put down roots back in my hometown and help with revitalization efforts. Uh, this is actually my second business I've started. I had a photography business for almost 10 years before opening the beer and wine shop. Um, so it's fun to do something that's a little more brick and mortar based. Wonderful. Thank you, Jennifer. And that's one of the stories that I love to hear is, you know, the, the idea of coming back to your hometown and helping with revitalization efforts. It does feel like we're often drawn, drawn back to, to where we came from. So that's really special. Thank you for that, Jennifer. Um, Ryan, I'd like to kick it over to you and hear your perspective on starting a business in your county. Um, was it at all challenging and where did you find the help that you needed? Uh, so in uh, in our county for escape, I uh, didn't really have any issues. Caldwell County uh, has actually been very, I'd say, easy to work with um, all the way across the board. Uh, as far as my experience in Burke County versus Caldwell County, I can say Caldwell County's got it going on. And that's a fact. Um, so and also, of course, the Chamber of Commerce helped immensely. Um, getting involved in that to begin with is what helped me make all the connections in order to find the customers for me to serve. Because um, Escape, uh, Escape, it's an escape room. If you didn't know, we're right on 321. Uh, you work together with other groups to escape themed experiences. Uh, so that's great for team building because I noticed that Caldwell County, 
industry was really growing and it still is. Uh, businesses are growing. And then when businesses are growing, there is a need for team building. Uh, so that's that's why Escape is, or, or the role that Escape serves in the business community of Caldwell County uh, is partially for team building. Um, but now, as far as uh, getting started in, in Caldwell County, it was not difficult. Um, I mean, of course, you know, opening a business is always difficult, um, you know, but as far as the general process, it went well, um, but mainly the Chamber of Commerce uh, was definitely what helped me get started and then introduced me to other groups along the way. And uh, I tell you, the community has just been fantastic in Caldwell County. I mean, it's it, it, like uh, Dr. Fort said, it is a small community, but man, is it a welcoming one. And uh, it does help a lot. That's awesome, Ryan. Thank you so much. That was a little bit of leading the witness from my part, because I can say that having gotten, had the opportunity to get to know Dr. Porch and Carmela and a lot of the people in Caldwell and Watauga counties, it really is incredible how much support there is to start and grow your businesses. Um, and that's, that's really, really important as we continue to build out these programs and get to know these areas. It really is um, important to know that, that you don't have to go to a major metropolitan area to start and grow your business. You can grow your business right where you want to live and right where you want to be. And that's, that's just a really important point. So thank you, Ryan, for that very much. Um, and I am going to now, Denise and Fulton, you two have great perspective on how starting a small business, um, excuse me, perspective on how supporting small businesses help the local community. Can you tell us a bit about the Horton Hotel, what you do there, um, your business and perspective on um, the perspective you have on why local business is vital to your community as well? <laughs> well, you're more involved in the local business um, conversation and reach out, et cetera. I'm, I was more involved in the initial um, development of the building, so I'm going to let you talk about your local relationships with other businesses. Oh, is that the question? Yeah. So he was talking to me while Stephanie mm -hmm. answered the question. <laughs> no problem, yes. Yeah, if you, Denise, why don't you tell us a little bit first um, about the Horton Hotel and then give us a little bit of perspective about what it's like working with other small businesses in your area as well and the support you provide each other. Got you. Um, so we're a 15 room boutique hotel. We're the first and currently the only um, uh, in downtown Boone. So um, that's certainly been an experience for us um, to build the business, um, something that has never been here before, including the rooftop lounge. So um, to have our hotel um, was sort of a step to offer something to downtown that wasn't here before. And it was incredibly important that we had and are connected locally um, to our neighbors and other local businesses. In fact, one of our values, the N in Horton is neighborly. Um, and the idea behind that is to make sure we are partnering as much as we can with local businesses and working together um, in a number of ways, um, just through our social media, having partnerships. Um, we've had when before COVID and we had more events, we were very welcoming to other businesses coming in and doing like a pop-up shop in our lobby and um, partnering in that way. We love to partner as far as community goes with um, requests for donations and participating in silent auctions. Um, certainly it serves our community, it serves those businesses and it serves us because it offers you know, a, another avenue for marketing. Um, so as far as our own sort of mission and core, um, being neighborly is sort of really important to who we are. In fact, um, we like to think that we're a place to stay and we're a place for a cocktail, but then we want to push people out the door to eat somewhere else and shop somewhere else and hike somewhere else and, you know, take advantage of the kind of you know, activities that are either in Watauga County or the surrounding counties. And so really important for us to be connected with other local businesses and, and promote that as much as we can. And, and because we're independently owned, we can say a yes to a lot of things. Um, and so I, I know, you know, it's always important for me to try to be creative 
and accommodating to those businesses who suggest opportunities to work together and also for us to think out of the box as to how we can more um, um, readily partner um, and support our neighbors and, and other local businesses. Aren't you glad she answered that question instead of me? <laughs> Well, I do love, Denise, the, the use of the word neighborly. That's an important distinction, too. We talk often about being polite and living locally and that sort of thing, but neighborly is, is a different level, isn't it? it? It really is a different level of, of togetherness in the community. So I, I really appreciate you using that term as well. Um, so let's kick it over to Ben. Ben, I would love to hear about BC Cinematics first, and then can you tell us a little bit about your experience at the Small Business Center at CCC and TI? Absolutely. Um, my name is Benjamin Coffey, and I'm owner of BC Cinematics LLC, and we um, are a film and video production company that offers production and post-production services for indie film, documentary, commercial, music video, um, and everything else in between. Um, but we've been in business for probably about three years now, and we're looking at opening up studios in Charlotte, Texas, and New York. Um, and so for us, I guess, working um, through, through COVID and everything, it's, it's kind of been an adventure. Um, but honestly, having that base, that local kind of community um, to kind of bounce things off of and to, to kind of grow through that um, has been super helpful. Um, we wouldn't have been able to do it if we hadn't have had a local community to actually bounce ideas off of with that kind of thing. And that's one of the reasons why we serve um, the, the local community rather than just doing international and just doing national work. Um, even though we're, we're supporting feature films and, and large production companies, um, we're also serving small commercials and, and small businesses. So to have the opportunity to have a business that can, can go both ways and, and support a community like that, like that's just uh, an, an opportunity that I, I could, couldn't ask for anything else, to be honest. Wonderful. And have you done work with the Small Business Center at CCC and TI? Absolutely, yeah. So I um, bounced a lot of ideas um, off with them and they kind of helped, uh, I guess, give me a lot of um, wisdom and understanding on how to actually create a foundation with that kind of thing. There's a lot of moving parts with, with a production company like this. There's a lot of um, connections that have to be made to be able to be in the entertainment industry, um, but to be able to, to grow from something that's um, small to, to having the, the major motion picture cameras that we have today is, is truly a blessing. So it's a blessing to have, have the connection of the Small Business Center for sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ben. And that makes it easy for me to transition over to Carmela. So Carmela, I would love for you to help us understand the support provided by the Small Business Center and what led you personally to leading the Small Business Center as well. Thank you, Stephanie. Well, as you mentioned before, I own my own business. So being able to support other businesses in this community is a passion of mine. I am a native from this area, so I'm invested in lots of ways. Um, but I, as you can see from this panelist, I've enjoyed working with all these businesses. And Ben didn't mention, but he's also teaches classes for us, webinars. So when I need an expert on video photography kind of things, he's my go-to guy for that. And those that attend those webinars love his um, the way he teaches and real-time techniques on how to take even your iPhone and make a video for your small business and with a small investment. So um, I just love working with these guys and what we do here at the Small Business Center. We are one of 58 small business centers in the state of North Carolina, each affiliated with community college. And our job is, as Dr. Porch mentioned, it's to support entre entrepreneurship. It's to support job creation, job retention, economic growth in our community. And we do that through um, counseling. Uh, we do one-on-one -on -one counseling and it's free to our business owners. Uh, we provide webinars and training throughout the year. And we're so excited about this website because it gives entrepreneurs a place to go to know that the articles and the training is trustworthy 
It's uh, real time, relevant. It's it's you know it's important information that you need. And as business owners, sometimes we're up in the middle of the night and we have a burning question that we want an answer to. We can't sleep, so it's a great resource to go to to ask a question or to watch a video or to read an article. So um, we just want to you know invite anyone that may be having an idea to start a business give us a call, you know, reach out to us, get on the website. Um, we're here to help any way that we can. And that's my favorite part is helping a business owner take their idea and make it a reality. Thank you so much for that, Carmela. Absolutely. So anyone can connect with, with Carmela directly through the site at startupcaldwellwatauga.com. Um, and I do, I, I love the, the fact that you are a business owner, you have been through, um, been through it with business ownership and you can help provide that feedback as well. Um, and your passion just clearly, clearly shows as far as helping and wanting to support entrepreneurs. Um, I am going to now kick it over to Caitlin um, for our next set of questions. Steph, uh, now that we've learned a little bit more about our panelists and their small business journeys, let's get into some advice for our fellow entrepreneurs. I'm going to start with you, Denise and Fulton. It sounds like your business is very well established. Have there been times either currently with the pandemic or in the past that you've had to pivot and make quick changes to your business model? And how did that contribute to your success? Well, that happens every day. <laughs> Um, and although the fundamental, I guess, concept of our business, um, I think, has been well thought out. So fundamentally, I don't think we've had to pivot as much as perhaps, um, luckily so, that we could have um, if the foundation of it wasn't thought out. Um, but one example of that is um, with COVID, and we've only been, so we opened in February of 2019, so it's established, but um, certainly we're still also building a foundation, um, and with COVID, we really wanted more so than ever to promote our rooftop bar, because typically in the winter, people would want to go inside and stay inside and enjoy their cocktail in the warmth of, of that. And so we actually pivoted to create what we didn't have the year before, which was a snow bar, um, which is essentially was the rooftop bar. Um, but we weren't open on the rooftop. We did not have a bar open on the rooftop during the winter months the year before, but we knew that people were more likely to probably go up there with their puffy coat um, and huddle around the fire in a way they would not the year before. And so we kept a snow bar open, which was very limited because um, we didn't want to fully staff it, but we just had warm beverages like hot toddies, um, single pours of bourbon um, and scotch to keep you warm on the inside, and then some draft beers. And so it was a limited menu, but that was a pivot um, for us to have a snow bar. And I think people really were drawn to it. And, and because it did offer what we said it would, it was outdoors. Um, and they were sort of more likely to endure the weather to have some gathering in that way. So that's an example of, of a pivot that, that we made. Um, and as an independent business, I think we are sort of um, able to do that um, in a small business, um, unlike you know, bigger commercial brands. Um, but yeah. yeah, particularly hotels, most of them are not private. And then of course the pivoting that had to be done with changing staffing and only being at 50% yeah. occupancy as far as the, you know, lounges are, which we still are. And so being thoughtful about that. So it's, it's nice to have good communication with your staff and be open-minded and not rigid so that you can kind of roll with the changes as they come um, and be open to, to doing so. Thank you, that, that was a really good example of how you've had to pivot during the pandemic. Um, I think I heard earlier, Jennifer, you also had to do a little bit of pivoting if you'd like to jump in on that question. Yeah, we've actually been We've pivoted a couple of times in the length of the business. Um, and three years ago, three and a half years ago, we started out as a hunger supply shop. And with on online retailing being what it is that 
didn't prove as fruitful as we needed for the square footage it occupied. So we actually phased that out and built out a small food prep area so that we can make cheese boards and some small plate items in house um, for people that were enjoying a nice beer or wine to go with that um, and hanging out. And then a year ago yesterday, as the rest of you know, um, bars and restaurants were completely shut down for COVID practices. We are considered a private club because Lenore has some unique uh, alcohol laws that we had to comply with. And therefore we were considered a bar and we were not allowed to reopen at all, I think until last October. And then that was outside only. Um, we, so our business model changed from a majority of on-premise to completely 100% off-premise. So one of the things we had to pivot with is providing consistent variety, new things coming in, um, yet still interacting with the customers coming in um, so that they felt like they were still in their, in their local hangout. So it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one sales consulting, I guess, um, helping them figure out what they wanted to enjoy that, that week and pointing out new things, bringing new things to the shop. Um, luckily, we were blessed with having a couple of years under our belt before things were shut down, and we had a very, very loyal customer base that we worked with, building relationships with uh, personally and professionally, and I feel that helped get us through the hardest parts. That's awesome. I'm really glad to hear that the pivots have worked for you guys. Um, going off of that topic, Carmela, do you have any thoughts or advice for business owners on how to start thinking through the process of pivoting? Yes, I mean, those are conversations that we have here at the Small Business Center a lot, uh, especially how do you, you know, market yourself during a, a, a pandemic? Um, I know we've been working with a Horton Hotel. They have uh, did a, a video campaign on social media. So you have to figure out where your audience is, how to reach it. Um, and that's one project that I think they've, um, I, I've seen it on social media. And I know you said you're, you've gotten some calls. So hopefully that's working for you. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, one of the things I like, I like doing here at the Small Business Center is brainstorming with our entrepreneurs and trying to find a roadmap or a blueprint of how do we get to that customer? How do we get the message to them? How do we reach them? So um, I do have a marketing background. So that's one of the strengths that I have here that we bring to the Small Business Center. And, um, you know, we're available 24 seven. So um, anytime there's a need, just reach out to us. That is perfect for the next question I have uh, for you, Ryan. Um, for both of your businesses, how have you used marketing to get the word out about your business? And do you have any advice um, or tips for other entrepreneurs who are joining us? Uh, sure, thanks for that question. Uh marketing to me is the key to business especially for me because my businesses are entertainment so the way i look at it is a customer does not need to come to either one of my businesses there's no need for there's no need for them to come to me so i have to convince them to want to come and then get them to want to come back Whereas the argument could be made with restaurants, you know, people got to eat. So, you know, they're going to go eat somewhere. So in the restaurant industry, maybe you would just want to be the best restaurant, right? Whereas in the entertainment industry, not only do you need to be one of the best, but you also have to convince them of, of where your value is. You know, I, I equate my businesses to Disney World as a, as a guide, I could say. And Disney World, you know, they sell the experience that if you go here, you're going to have the best time ever. It's going to be, you know, the best thing ever. And that's kind of an entertainment what I try to sell. Um, marketing wise advice that I would have is social media is the best. Uh, one thing that I've said a lot is, you know, back when, and I'm sorry if there's any noise, there's a fan that's turning on. Um, but back when Facebook started with business pages, you know, 
it was free. We uh, most of us probably remember that you know you used to be able to uh, post Facebook posts and it would show it to everyone who liked your page. And then they they stopped that and made it to where you had to pay to advertise. So a lot of people said, well, I'm not going to advertise on social media because they're charging. And so my argument to that is why, right? Because if I'm n- nothing wrong with billboards, I use billboards. But you think about it, if somebody is driving down the road, what are the chances they're going to see that billboard? Probably not much because if they're not watching the road, then they're probably watching their phone, unfortunately, right? So if everyone's attention is already on the phone, why not advertise there? Everyone is already looking at their phone. They're, you know, they're not looking at a newspaper. They're not looking at a sign. They are on their phone. So that's where you want to advertise is where people's attention is. Rather than trying to draw their attention, it's already there. So my suggestion is number one, advertising, social media, and Google. That's awesome. Thank you so much for giving those tips, everyone. Um, next up is Ben. This is a little bit of a different topic. Um, was it a light bulb moment or did your desire to become an entrepreneur slowly transform into real motivation all the time, over time? Um, so what really sparked your motivation to start a full balloon business and even take it internationally? Absolutely. Um, Honestly, that's a really good question. I started originally not thinking that I was going to be in in business at all, really. Um, I I was an artist, so artists normally don't think of the business side of things. They think of the creative side of things. Um, And I was very aware of that at the very beginning. And um, when I first started, I was doing, you know, smaller gigs, um, you know, 300, 400, 500 dollar gigs um, just here and there. And uh, as time went along, I ended up quitting my day job and, and starting a business because I wanted to take it a little bit more seriously. And with that, I guess, motivation wise, um, it was always, I was always looking for the next best thing. Um, how can I, um, I guess, provide a more premium service um, to, to businesses, to um, you know, people who are, who are dreamers, who are production companies, who have an idea that want to bring that to life. Um, so with that, trying to, I guess, for me, connecting with people was, was really one of the things that really inspired me. And, and making new connections, going from place to place and, and building that business and building those connections um, was, was really inspiring for me. I'm more of a people person. So um, in, in business, that's connections is everything. Networking is, is everything. It's not necessarily even about how, how good the final product is, even though that's important. Um, it's, it's all about who, who you know and who knows you. So uh, with that, it was... It was kind of tough at the beginning, um, trying to figure out how to have multiple streams of income. Um, as an artist, that's super important. That way, if one fails, um, like like with COVID and whatnot, we have backups to to move into a different into a different setting. Um, and just honestly, creativity in in business is super super huge. Um, and I'm I'm honestly with Ryan because we we specialize. Um, as, as far as my company goes, we specialize in, in entertainment. And so we, we um, focus mainly on telling stories um, rather than just the, the normal video content. We specialize in tell, telling stories and making um, connections with people through a screen. Um, so normally people will pay a premium for, for that kind of thing. Um, so similar to like a business after hours or something like that. Um, where where we go to those kinds kinds of events to make connections, we're able to do that through the screen. Um, and honestly, to to be able to change lives and not necessarily know everybody's um, life life story or know exactly how that affects people, um, just to know that that's happening through through images and and through just um, everyday business is is honestly what motivated me. That's, that's very cool. Um, it sounds like there is definitely something that every entrepreneur is born with um, that leads to success. So next, we're going to open up the round table to everybody. I'll facilitate a little bit. Um, so this question's for everybody. We'll start with Jennifer. What's one lesson that you've learned um, that's taken your business to the next level or led to your success? 
one lesson i would say listen that's it listen um listen to your customers listen to your staff listen to the family supporting you in the background um because you're going to get your best ideas and some of your solutions to your problems from listening to others um so Turning off your own ego and opening your ears is sometimes a challenge, especially for entrepreneurs, because they think they probably know everything or everything can be figured out on their own. And that is so not true. Awesome. Uh, who wants to go next? Denise and Fulton? Fulton said I had to answer. So uh, there's many, many, many lessons learned. Um, one thing that I know has helped us kind of midway that we developed um, was really building our vision out. So we had like a basic vision, but we really expanded on that um, to come up with what we call the Horton Way um, as far as what our expectations are for our product, for our staff, for the guest experience, and to have that explicitly written out in a document so that we can always sort of judge ourselves based upon those expectations and hold others accountable to that. So it's not just sort of this idea in our heads, but it's formatted and strategic. Um, and that has really helped us and we didn't have that initially. Um, we always knew to have like a mission and values and a vision, but to really expand on the strategy behind the vision. I think was a good lesson that we learned. And, um, and now, of course, it's in our handbook and we're sharing that with any new staff that come in. And like anytime we think about like a new product, it sounds like a good idea, but we want to make sure it fits the Horton way. Or if we see a staff slipping and the kind of customer service that they're offering, then we have a language to be able to go back to, to remind them of what is the Horton way and, and something that everyone agrees to be part of. Any other lesson learned? That was really great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. Um, that's really good for anyone starting a business to just keep in mind from the get go. Um, that's great. So, next, Ryan, do you have uh, one big lesson that you'd like to share with anyone hoping to start a small business? Sure. Um, I would say. You know, no, the main thing is, is care for your business like it's your child. I haven't been a, a father myself, uh, you know, but I imagine I care for my businesses like I will my child, uh, which means they come first before anything else, including myself. So, you know, I put everything back into my business, back into it, back into it as long as I can because I know that the business is going to grow just like any other investment would. And uh, along with that, I would say, focus on your business and not other businesses. You cannot do that because you have a plan and you're an entrepreneur and your gut is telling you what's right. Listen to your gut, do not look at others because that's just gonna mess up your plan. Your mind knows what you're doing. You're made to do what you're doing. So trust your gut and follow that. And also work on self-improvement uh, because as you grow, you know, at least for me, when I started, I thought, well, when my business gets to this point, then it's going to become easier. You know, it's going to be easier and it's going to be enjoyable. Well, that hasn't really been the case, right? You, you get, you climb the mountain and you get to a good spot and then here comes the tough part. And then it goes back up. And each time that happens, it may or may not be harder. And the larger you grow, the more adversaries you have, the more haters you have, the more difficulties you have to overcome. So self-improvement is so important, if nothing else, for the self-confidence. Because, you know, after so long, you may get so much of that negative feedback from other things or people that it might start, you know, making you doubt yourself. And if you have not worked on yourself, you won't have the self-confidence and the, uh, the know, the know that, that you're right to stick through it and keep trusting your gut. So self-improvement, put everything into the business that you can and don't care about what others think, because if you do, you'll try to buy things to impress people who don't really care. And then you're just like, you know, hurting your own business. So take care of it like it's your own child. 
That's awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and Ben, would you like to go next? Uh, I know you already gave a little bit of advice, um, but any lessons that you've learned um, that have contributed to your success? Absolutely. Yeah. I think um, honestly, any struggles that you go through, I would say use those as part of your story. Don't look back upon them as something that's that's a bad thing. It's something that's something that brought you to where you are today. Um, so honestly, be strong, um, embrace who you are and and embrace the love that you have for the community and, and the others that you're serving. So I think that's, you know, something that that makes a really solid, strong business. Thank you. And Carmela. Yeah. Can I answer something too? Yeah. Thank you. You're, if I gave you time, you, you would have asked me. Uh, just a couple of things. I love the advice from everyone. I, I feel 100% agreement with those. And this was mentioned before, but I think it's all about the experience and the relationship. It doesn't matter if you're a service industry, if you own a restaurant, a hotel. People like doing business with people that make life easier for them and they trust and they enjoy doing business with. So it is all about relationship. It really, really is. And I learned that early on. And it's also about your relationship with your employees. You have to take care of your employees. Um, I've, I've heard from so, several of you that have said that to me directly. So I know you feel the same, but um, you know, taking care of your employees um, is, is, is part of that relationship building too. So it's very, very important. And they are a voice and, you know, the face to your business. So I love what Denise said about making sure everything fits your vision and your model um, and continue with that as you grow. So important that, um, you know, your employees follow through with that. Customer service is so, so very, very important. The frontline people do represent who you are. Carmela, that is fantastic. And it's a great segue into um, the question that I had thought about for Denise and Fulton and really anyone on the panel and Carmela, you as well, because it sounds like this really speaks to you. Um, culture and culture building is very important. It's a very large conversation that I hear a lot from entrepreneurs. And part of that question of, you know, even from an, a human resources perspective or a culture, or a team, a people resources perspective, um, how do I start building my culture? When do I start building my culture? So um, for Denise and Fulton, as far as, you know, it sounds like you guys are working really hard on developing a really strong culture around the Horton way. Um, and I was just thinking as you were talking through that, is that something that starts at hiring? Do you start thinking about as you're interviewing people, really, will that resonate with them? Is there values alignment, that sort of thing? So could you talk um, even you know, philosophically or even tactically around how um, you help to, to really start instilling that culture very thoroughly right away? Yeah, I mean, it, even developing the business that was critical to our thought process and our conversations before we opened our doors when it was just sort of a plan we were putting together is culture was part of our conversation from the very start and knowing that for our business to be successful to create a healthy culture um, amongst our staff and within each other so that that's going to naturally extend and be felt by the people that walk through our doors. Um, and so that was an intentional that, focus that we had. That actually started a year before we opened our doors at an offsite office. Um, really talking just about hammering out the handbook and really kind of using language and coming up with expectations that were the right fit for our, our values. Um, and yes, with um, the hiring process, that's something now that we have it formulated and we have the Horton way you know, defined, we can sort of share that with people who are interested in working with us and assessing if they fit and we don't use any tools for that um, as much as the conversations we have before the interview and during the interview and then giving people time 
um, through like a 90 day trial to, you know, be able to see how they function and, and um, assess if they fit the kind of culture that we wanted to create. And, and as far as culture, I mean, it's things as simple, but as important as respect and kindness and compassion, as empathy, um, and knowing that if we can cultivate that within and amongst each other, then that is the sort of experience that a guest will have when they come through the doors. We also were, I'm just thinking back, we use Zinger men's. I don't know if you all are familiar with that deli in Michigan. Um, in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. What I know about their business actually is one way they pivoted is not only did they um, benefit from selling corned beef and rye bread, but they also really sold their customer service training because that's something they did so well. And so we actually purchased training that they provided, um, again, because it really fit with the kind of culture that we wanted to cultivate here. And just one piece of that, for example, was the 10-4 rule. So um, the idea to be able to greet anybody that's, you know, within 10 feet, you're going to greet them with a smile and eye-to-eye uh, -eye contact. Four feet, you're going to say hello and welcome to the space. Um, and so that's just one piece that we benefit from um, integrating in a tool that we found amongst others, um, learning from businesses that had a culture similar to what we knew we wanted to cultivate here and not recreating the wheel, but looking into Disney and looking into Zingerman's and those other businesses that we found had a culture that was similar to the guest experience and the staff experience that we wanted to um, integrate into the Horton. Wonderful. And do you find how, as far as you, I, I'm hearing integrating quite a bit, and I love the use of that word. Um, it's not just about reading the employee handbook on day one. It's about really living it. How do you have any examples of how you live it, or you have the expectation of your staff to, to, to live those values and, and constantly be putting them back in front of you? Um, I mean, just in terms of what I hear as far as, um, you know, the kind of conversations they're having with each other, um, the interactions that they might be having with guests, um, and really holding to the values that, that we've defined. And um, I said neighborly is one of them and hospitality and originality and respect and teamwork. So if you haven't noticed, it's H-O-R-T-O-N. Um, so we clearly um, share those values and really can go back to that if we notice that staff is interacting or behaving in a way that doesn't match um, those and having um, training that sort of educates them on that. And then we came up with our own video, kind of like a PowerPoint. It's not too fancy. Ben, you can really help me make a better video perhaps for training, um, but it's good enough. And actually staff say, oh my gosh, I've never experienced this before. Um, they, in, in their experience, and of course we have a lot of young staff, but it was the first time they came in to um, work for a hotel or a bar um, where they had sort of to sit down in front of the computer and spend a couple hours learning about our mission and learning about our values and kind of being able to see what we're, how we're explaining it and, and what that would look like. And then of course we can witness how they put that into action. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And at the risk of bumping up against time, I do want to, because this is a question that we get so much, or we get questions about um, culture and, and really incorporating that. Do, do any of our other panelists have anything else that they wanted to add to that? Okay. We have um, another a question that's come in from our audience that I would actually love to hear um, really from, from everyone. I know, Carmela, you have... Um, you have some great experience on your own personally, as well as talking to lots of business owners in both your roles as small business center director and business owner. And then for our business owners as well, 
Um, any valuable lessons learned from the pandemic this or this past year that will change the way you operate under normal circumstances? So thinking, thinking forward and looking, looking forward to um, to normal, more normal circumstances. Denise and Fulton, um, I just want to say that I'm really hoping the winter bar stays. Um, but we'll go ahead and I, whoever wants to kick us off with this, I would love to really hear from everyone if you have thoughts on that as well. I'll, I'll kick us off on that um, because, like I said, we went from being almost maxing out our max maximum occupancy every night that we could as a business model to being completely shut down and 100% to go. Now that we're reopening, we've decided to keep things smaller. Um, we're going to try keeping it a more intimate experience with our customers, um, those coming back in to join us. It's not something that's really been done in our area, I feel like. It's always been how many people can fit in the space um, because that's where you're gonna have maximum profits, but we're gonna try making a more uh, laid back approach and keeping it smaller groups. Um, we've reevaluated our budgeting and we can make it work financially. And so we're going to give it a shot. We kind of get to start over. Um, COVID was bad, but it also gave you some opportunities to change things that may not work for you anymore, either because you're getting older or you're just more established. You get to move things around a little bit. Ben, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, so I think um, one of the things for me was probably just not, I guess, getting comfortable, um, not necessarily just settling um, in the, the state of business. You always have to be on your toes. You always have to be on your feet with that kind of thing. Um, like Ryan said, it's like your, your child, so you always have to take care of it. You never know when it's, you know, going to be doing something that you, you, you know, you might not not, not want um, or might have to, to kind of take care of. So with that kind of thing, I, I, I feel like um, just not settling and, and not um, just getting comfortable in business was something that I learned. Awesome. And Ryan, over to you. Any thoughts on, on how things might change for you for the long term? Sure. Um, and just uh, if, I, if I may preface, uh, I'll focus on Lake Hickory Haunts because there's a lot more capacity issue there than Escape. Um, so last year, um, well, not last year, on a typical year, we put through uh, 3,000 people in three hours um, and we're open 21 days throughout the year. So, you know, it's a lot of people to put through in a short amount of time. In addition to that, we have 70 to 100 employees on any given night. So it's a matter of, you know, it's just like any event, a lot of people, a lot of things all at one time. So what, what, and, and sorry, I'm temperature checks, had to do temperature checks this past year for all employees with a lot of people it made us have to change our flow of our entrances and exits. Um, we had to change our sets up, add more walls, add plexiglass throughout all the attractions, of course. Um, but what it's, what it's helped me know for the future mainly is uh, for Lake Hickory Haunts, adding more touchless experiences or scares. Uh, so you can use pneumatics, uh, which are air powered or electric uh, props and things to interact with the guests. Um, we've, we're also expanding our space um, because we have a lot of land and, and we're expanding our midway space to have more space for people. Um, and it's also making, so I'm thinking more about our flow for the future. Uh, in the past, we had a lot of areas where people might be walking right past each other, uh, maybe entering here, exiting here, or maybe entering and exiting on the same path sometimes. And now that's totally changed the way we have to look at things. So from now here on out, we're like, okay, if someone's entering here, then they need to be exiting in another location. They can't be right by each other. So from here on out, basically everything that we're, that we're planning, we're just keeping in mind, just as we have for security in the past from physical threats, now we just have to keep in mind 
you know, if, if a pandemic of any kind happens again, or if this comes back up, you know, then how do we keep the people separate? How are we able to handle up to 5,000 people, you know, in, in a short amount of time and keep them separated? So there's a lot of moving parts to it, but it's, it's more so just planning for the future to keep people more separated in space. Awesome. Carmela, how about from, from your perspective, either what you're hearing um, being, you know, quote unquote, out in the field with, with business owners or even from, from yourself? I think something that I hear and I advise our businesses is take the challenges and turn them into opportunities. Um, we've all faced challenge. You've heard a lot of the businesses here talk about how they've had to pivot and re rethink the way they do their business. But um, obviously don't be afraid of moving forward digitally. Uh, we've all had to do that in every aspect of our life. But yeah, just basically look at those challenges, uh, how to turn them into opportunities because that they're there. And you've heard several of them today. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And then uh, finally, Denise and Fulton, do you have any thoughts that you wanted to add um, for how your operations might change under normal circumstances? One thing that I thought I would say if Fulton had anything else on his mind, but he doesn't. Well, it's spontaneity. It's all yeah. about being spontaneous. And really how this business was formed was from a spontaneous idea. And so we are always trying to be creative and receptive and open and not closed off for the most part um, to see what's you know, really hour to hour, things can change. So I think that's really important not to get stuck into a routine. And our business actually is kind of exciting in that respect. There's a lot of different things that happen in the community that we can promptly turn on a dime and say, oh, let's do this, let's do that. Oh, we forgot St. Patrick's Day is today. Let's go get that hat you wore two years ago. Which Where is it? didn't happen. I knew it was St. Patrick's yeah. Day. He might have well, been. Right. Love that photo, Fulton. Yeah, I mean, loved it, loved it. <laughs> just be quick on your feet. You know, I think that's what you have to do. Um, and then one more specific thing is what I feel good about is um, just having our breakfast being, it used to be, of course, just a artisan breakfast bar, buffet, self-serve. And we had to, of course, move to um, staff being scheduled to serve the breakfast. So we still wanted to include that as an amenity. Um, but what became of it is it became more intimate um, because the guest needs to sort of ask for what they want and then the staff will toast their toast and um, make, we've mm. actually added our homemade cinnamon toast, which is nice and buttery and warm. And people are just loving something as simple as that. So it really allowed us to change our breakfast um, in a way that actually is better than just the buffet that we had out for guests to um, you know, do on their own, just because it allows for more interaction with the staff. So that could be one example of something we would have never thought to do it that way. But um, while we are able now to go and are gonna go to self-serve coffee, because everyone like, you know, where's my coffee? Um, and they, we want them to, ha to have the coffee out and they could go ahead and pump it and get it themselves, but then continue with our prepping of the breakfast, which is something we never thought we would do before, just because we were following the old model of just having a buffet style breakfast. So I think we'll keep that um, process, which is something we wouldn't have thought to try until we had to. Well, I love that. And we're we're bumping up against time, but I just want to say at the risk of, of sounding overly sentimental, this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love talking to entrepreneurs and really especially in this past year, um, seeing the adaptability, the positivity in a really incredibly difficult time, seeing the changes that y'all have made um, and really just you know pivoting on a dime and pushing through, is it's, it's inspiring to me and I know it's inspiring to others as well. Um, so I really appreciate you all joining us today and um, telling your stories as well. 
Um, so since we are, we're two minutes over, so thank you to the audience for sticking with us for a couple extra minutes. Um, I wanna first just thank again, our roundtable participants. I really, really appreciate Carmela, Jennifer, Ben, Denise, Fulton, and Ryan for joining us. And of course, a very special thank you to Dr. Porch for your support of Caldwell and Watauga counties. Um, to our audience, we will be sending out a recording of this, uh, this webinar, as well as links to our participants' businesses so you can get to know them as well. And a link to startup, startup caldwellwatauga.com. You can connect directly with Carmela there, check out free business trainings, and feel free to drop us any questions that you think of or right now or in the future so that we can get those answered for you and get back to you. Thank you again to everyone for joining. We really appreciate, appreciate you all and are very excited about Startup Caldwell Watauga. Thank you.